In January, inflation rates hit a 40-year high, rising at an annual rate of 7.5%. To discuss more about what we're seeing and to provide insight on when we can expect inflation to normalize, we're joined by global market strategist for JP Morgan's private bank, Elise Ozenbaugh. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. So to start off, can you tell us why we're seeing high inflation rates and what items are experiencing the highest price increases? Sure. So the inflation we're experiencing today is really a byproduct of the strength of the economic recovery and demand that we've seen since the start of the pandemic era. In 2021, consumers who find themselves on very solid financial footing helped drive the U.S. economy to grow at the fastest rate that we've seen in 40 years. That, combined with these pandemic-related supply issues, is really what's been driving inflation higher. Now, as for where we're seeing the most acute price pressures, over the course of the past year, it's really been a story about the goods sector. Even today, Americans are still spending 15% more on goods than they were before the pandemic. And if we zoom in on an area like used cars, for example, we see that prices have increased more than 40% for that particular component. The one thing I would mention, though, is that while goods have been the predominant driver up to this point, the most recent data is starting to suggest that inflation is broadening out into other categories, like those that are more oriented towards the services sectors of the economy. Yeah, and experts say that tensions between Russia and Ukraine could have an impact on inflation. Can you talk about what we could potentially see? Well, Russia is one of the world's largest producers of oil and natural gas. So the concern with this conflict is that it could potentially create more inflation by pushing energy prices higher. This one all comes back to basic supply and demand. Right now, demand for oil is high because the world is reopening and people are starting to travel more. So that's already pushed oil prices higher. But if in addition, we end up seeing an escalation of this conflict that causes a supply disruption, that could potentially create another surge in oil prices. Yeah, and there has been talk about the Fed raising interest rates. Can we expect that to happen anytime soon? And if so, what impact would that have on inflation? Yes, we do think that the Fed is going to start a series of rate hikes coming out of its March FOMC meeting. And we should also expect more rate hikes to come thereafter. So by the end of this year, we think that interest rates are going to be notably higher than they were at the end of 2021. The Fed raises interest rates, though, in order to cool off the economic activity that generates inflation in the first place. So that should, to some extent, help moderate some of these inflationary pressures. But I would also note that it's not necessarily going to cause growth to come screeching to a halt. We're coming off of a level of interest rates that are extremely low and very stimulative. So while we expect growth will moderate, we still think it can continue to carry along at a very healthy clip. And now you just mentioned that increasing interest rates can help manipulate inflation, but how would increasing rates impact other aspects of the economy, such as buying a home? Well, interest rates influence the pricing in all financial markets, including the cost of taking out a loan. So already, as the Fed has kind of signaled to us that they intend to raise interest rates, mortgage rates have already risen to the highest levels we've seen since 2019. I think it'll be really interesting to watch what happens in an area like the housing market, because despite that increased cost of borrowing, you still have this supply demand imbalance, you've got really strong consumer balance sheets, and you have wage growth that could potentially more than compensate for that increased cost of borrowing and keep the housing market really robust. Lastly, does it look like inflation will normalize anytime soon? We do think that that normalization is going to get underway in 2022, and that's really for two primary reasons. So one of them being the Fed's newfound focus on combating inflation, and the other being that those pandemic restrictions that created this lopsided composition of consumer demand in the first place are starting to fade. I would flag, though, that the new normal level of inflation might be higher than what we got used to over the course of the past 10 years in the cycle ahead, and there are risks that could conspire to keep inflation elevated, like the tensions in Russia and the Ukraine and rising wages, which contribute to increased costs for businesses. But the bottom line is that we do think inflationary pressures are going to moderate in the year ahead. Global market strategist for JP Morgan's private bank, Elise Ozenbach, thank you so much for all of that great insight and for being here today. Thank you for having me, Jackie.